What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to add the knowledge base to your AI agent. We also call it Retrieval Augmented Generation aka RAG. So today's tutorial is actually the continuation of the previous video that I have. So if you haven't watched that, make sure you check that out first. I'll provide a link down below or at the corner here. But before we get to today's tutorial, I want to briefly talk about what RAC is because this is a pretty new idea in the AI industry as well. So RAC is pretty much a technique that a lot of people in the AI industry uses as like additional information to fit into the LLM so that they can improve the accuracy of the model of the response. So for example, for a teacher store, if you have an Agent that works for you that can answer questions and obviously the model no matter how good it is we only use public available information to train it so if the customers ask questions about like the store information like what's the name of the store or how much the t-shirts are it's obviously not gonna know because it's not available in the public or in the data that we use to train the model and this is what rag comes in because we can fit into the additional information that is related to my own company so that it has a full picture of what exactly it's doing. And RAG contains two phases, just like how the name implies. The first phase is retrieval. So it retrieves the information that we store in the knowledge base that is specifically to my company. And then the second phase is generation. So it uses the additional information to pass into the LLM as an input to generate a response so that this way the response is more accurate. And in order to RAG, the first thing that we have to do is that we have to create a knowledge base for it. And the most common way of doing that is using a vector store. Um, some people also use database, but in today's tutorial, we're going to use a vector store. So a vector store is just a numeric representation of the documents, the additional information that you store in the knowledge base. So it's easier for the LLM to interpret it. And in today's tutorial, this is what we are building. It's pretty simple. It's similar to what we had last time. We also have Bedrock that uses Cloud3 as our LLM and then it connects to a Lambda function that you can call to call APIs and stuff. But today what we're going to do is that we're going to add a knowledge base to the architecture so that the agent can use it as additional information along with the cloud LLM. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so right now I'm on the AWS console on the Bedrock page. So just a reminder, this is the agent that we built last time. If we click into it, this is the name of it, I am row the model that we use, and this is the prompt. Pretty simple. It's just telling it that it's an agent that works at the t-shirt store and some other informations. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, we don't have any knowledge bases yet. Uh, so we're gonna add one to it today. But before we do that, let's test out how it's performing without a knowledge base if we ask them questions about the store or specific information that is not in public. So let's go to terminal, open Jupyter Notebook. And we're going to create a new notebook and call it agent testing. And just like last time, we're going to create a YouTube class that help us to call the agent. And that's uploaded in my GitHub. Create a new file, youtube.py. Paste it, save. Make sure that you have the same region as the region that you create your agent in. So go back here. Let's do some import first. Okay, that's done. And then we're gonna define the agent ID and we're gonna get it from here. Alias agent ID as well. Or maybe just alias ID. This is the alias ID that we created last time. And then we're gonna create a session ID. Okay, and now we're ready to call the agent. Agent alias ID. We're going to define a message. We're going to ask it, what is your store name? Okay, so the first question we're going to ask the agent is that, what's the store name? So obviously it's not going to know because we haven't told them anything about the stores and it's not going to have that information within the model that is trained on. So it's probably going to say that, oh, I have no idea. Uh, so let's see. Oh, error. Let's see. Oh, input text. Session ID is good. Okay, that should be okay. Ah, typo. Okay, let's try it one more time. All right, it's thinking, thinking, 
And the final response is that, okay, it doesn't understand what it is, which is expected because we haven't told them anything about the stores or anything about the price of the t-shirt. So let's see, how much is a medium blue t-shirt? It's probably gonna say something similar. Yep, exactly. So it doesn't know that. And that's expected because we haven't created a knowledge base that's specific to my company or to my store yet. And now let's go over to the AWS and create a knowledge base for it to use so it's smarter. Okay, so right now I'm back on the back rock page on AWS and we're going to create a knowledge base for the agent to use. And before this tutorial, I created a simple PDF that lays out some dummy data about our store. Um, so for store information, we call it awesome tees, something like that, uh, fake address, fake website, fake email and all that. And then product category, um, and then the price for each of the colors of the t-shirt and the size of it corresponding. Um, and some simple FIQs. And this is the document that we're going to use to create the knowledge base. Um, but before we can do that, we actually need to upload this to AWS S3 just so that Bedrock can retrieve it from there to create a vector base, a vector store. So let's do that first. So go back to the AWS console, search for S3, open it in a new tab. So all you have to do is just to create a bucket, any name you want. And then in this bucket, you can just upload the document that you want to create a knowledge base based on. Um, so I already did that before, so I don't need to do it again. So it's right here, which is the same as the document that I just showed you. So now let's go back to the Bedrock page. And now we are ready to create a knowledge base. So on the left side here, we click on knowledge bases. And obviously right now we don't have any. So hit create and we're gonna create a knowledge base with a vector store, just like what I mentioned before. Give it a name, I'll just call it awesome T knowledge base. And then you can give it a description. Let it create a new service row for us. And then we store the document in S3. So we can choose this and then hit next. And then we're gonna browse the S3 bucket. And that's the one. And then scroll down. We're just gonna use the default parser to parse it. Use the default chunking as well. Hit next. And then for embedding the models, uh, click select models. So one quick thing about this is that in order to choose the model, you have to request access to it. I showed it in my previous video on how to do that. I don't think I have request access to these models yet, um, but I know I have access to Cohere. So I'm gonna use this. On the man is fine, so hit apply. So we're gonna use that as our embedding models. And then vector database. Um, so you actually have the option to choose different vector stores. Some of them are within AWS and some of them are not. So you can choose the one that you want. Uh, for me, I think Open Search is a really good one. So I'm going to choose that and that's also the default one. So just do that, which is the Open Search Serverless. Hit Next. Hit Create. So this is actually going to take five to 10 minutes uh, to create it because there's a lot of things to build in the background. So I'm going to pause the video and then come back when it's done. So see you in a bit. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes and it seems like the database creation was done and successful. So let's scroll down here. This is our knowledge base. So remember when we chose where to store the data, we chose open search. Uh, so now let's go to open search and see what we have. So open search open on a new tab and then go to serverless dashboard you see that we have one dashboard here so let's go to dashboard explore on my own and then on the left side here we can open up a dev tool and then uh, this is just a search query that selects everything that we have in the database so his search and obviously we don't have anything now yet because we haven't synced the data from S3 yet. So we're going to do it now. So go back to Bedrock knowledge base and then scroll down here. Check the knowledge base we just created. Hit sync. It's syncing. Okay, it's done. So right now if we go back to the dev tool and we search again, we should be able to see something. Okay, it actually takes a couple of minutes for it to show up. Uh, so this is pretty much our document and this is the numeric representation of it. And it's just a bunch of numbers, um, but seems like it got all the data that we need. And now let's go back to Bedrock and configure our agent to use it. So go back to agents. This is our agent. I did an agent builder. Scroll down. 
to the knowledge basis, hit add. And then in here, we have the option to choose the knowledge base that we just created. And the instruction is pretty important because we have to let the agent know that, okay, this knowledge base contains this type of information. So if the customers ask you these things, go here to look for it. Otherwise, it's not going to know where to look and stuff. So we're going to type something here. Okay, uh, it's a pretty simple instruction, uh, but obviously you can add more details to it. I just say that, oh, when customers ask about the store information or t-shirt prices, search this knowledge base for an answer or something like that. So hit add, save and exit. So since we make changes to the agent, we have to prepare it again. And since we make updates to it, so we have to create a new alias. So delete and then create a new agent create a new version as well okay so that's associated with version 2 which is the version that has the knowledge base associated with it so what we have to do now is just copy this agent ID go back to our notebook update the alias ID so let's do it one more time create a new session and now let's ask is your store name everything else the same so now we should be able to see it's an awesome T because this is what we name it. So it's thinking, thinking, knowledge base. Uh, okay, so the final response is the store name is awesome T, which matches with what we have here. Uh, let's ask it, what is your store address? Okay, and that is the address that we specify in the document as well. So ask. let's ask about how much is a medium blue t-shirt okay so it's processing thinking thinking and then it's like okay according to the price information a blue t-shirt that's medium costs $30 so let's see if it's smart enough to get that right uh, medium blue 30 okay that's correct and right now our agent is a lot smarter because we give it more information to work with Okay, this is it. I hope you learned something helpful today. And if you liked the video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.